For the record, Zach, I'll take the lotto numbers. <laughs> Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z. And I'm Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And we are back at UTV Takeover Coos Bay 2021. And with today's special guests are uh, fellow uh, co-drivers in the Wreck-It world, you might say. Uh, we have uh, big man Al McBeth here, the, the Huckfest uh, man himself. And uh, today we have somebody new on the show. We have uh, uh, Duck. Oh, already. already. I told He's not going to get there. It's not going to get any better either. So <laughs> why don't you introduce yourself, who you are, and what you do? Uh, I'm Donald Ependendio, and I drive the Titan Monster truck. Okay, and so you. By All right, t- Donald Epidural. We are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Nailed so it. nice to have an epidemiologist on the show. Yeah, so no, you guys got it. It's a great. It's going to be a great time. So uh, we opened the door for that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here at uh, Huck. At, we're not at Huckfest. We're going to be at Huckfest today at four o'clock. But uh, uh, we're at, uh, at Takeover here, and we we kind of uh, brought these guys together. They're both um, guys that like to send it big and, and do some fun stuff with their cars. So um, Al, how's the? Re- I mean, how was the trip down here? Obviously. Uh, yesterday was a bit of an ordeal, but how was the trip down here and, and all that? Uh, man, this this is this event. I don't know if it's like the first event of the year, blues or what, but like this, the last two months have just been a, a gong show. Like, like literally, uh, there's been so much work gone into getting here that seems almost excessive. Right. <laughs> um, we've just been working on the cars, just having. Uh, there's a bit of like a you know parts shipping just taking a lot, bit longer on some components these yeah. days. I think that's playing into it because you're always stopped on the job for certain parts um but just yeah man like literally the last two months like i've barely left the shop um and then yeah i uh, had this the, the the same old border bs coming down and then um heard you I'd, guys had a party for a few hours yeah yeah we, we <laughs> got that, to know the border guys a bit is that related to like titles and stuff like that like is it like if, it, if you'd have been just in your pickup you're or is it you're coming down no, no problem? whole different program yeah. with with, okay. with what's going on with with covid now and all the all the all that crap right so um and then yeah i had some fuel issues coming down we we ended up having to do a big backtrack because google tricked me and told me florence had e85 and it didn't so um welcome and, to the northwest and the <laughs> internal hunt for e85 <laughs> and then um yeah then got here and we went out and uh went out and we're going to get our first test run down on the jump car and ended up not testing the shocks we more or less chested the belly pan <laughs> and the roof <laughs> so so we got that all fixed up and now, hey, now tires, we're in business those tires held up pretty well too <laughs> <laughs> hey, and for the record for our american audience a, a gong show is a canadian hockey term for a, <laughs> for a mess <laughs> yeah not a donkey show a gong show <laughs> gong show right, right so uh yeah so you came across the border uh uh, what Friday? Um, that's a good question. When well, did I no, come across? No, no, that would be Thursday night. Thursday, <laughs> uh, no, Thursday. Wednesday. I came across Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Yeah, and I got here Thursday okay. evening. Gotcha. So, how long of a drive is that for you? Well, it should be nine hours. Well, if you minus the, and then you minus seven <laughs> hours, or then you add seven hours of me onto the trip, and so then whatever that equals. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long was the border crossing? I, I sat there for three hours. Jesus. That's not not in line, but not the like. Oh no, it's not the worst. I've I've been there for longer. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they certain certain times they dig deeper in his past, and sometimes they don't. So it just depends on which one you get. But uh, we, it's, this also was my first trip uh, traveling with a visa, so oh. so that helped uh, that helped prolong things a little bit because your first crossing with a visa has to be completely verified. And yeah, verified and all this whatever they have to do. So uh, printer was out of ink, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Conveniently. <laughs> oh, we uh, gotta go get a toner cartridge at Staples. We'll be right back. Uh, just hang tight (laughs) but um so yeah that's a that's a whole thing that people don't really understand like you're not just driving down here like there's a a whole ordeal that goes into getting here and speaking of ordeals like i can't imagine what a monster truck loadout looks like i mean you're probably used to it by now it's probably like just second nature to load up the trailer but um like kind of give us an idea what does that look look like when you want to go somewhere with it it's a definite process i mean it's a couple hours to load and it's a couple hours to unload and put the truck back together for sure you can't haul it with the big tires on it right so you got to take those off put these little skinny tires on it get them in the trailer get your big tires in the trailer get all your tools in there and then my truck sits up on ramps on top of the trailer 
it's, yeah. uh, it's a process. And and what's your loadout look like? Is it just, you know, the minimums, or do you got, like, spare stuff? Or Oh, we bring spare everything, yeah. I break that thing every time I look at it. So you got to <laughs> darn near have a spare truck in the trailer and parts and pieces, you know? Right. Are you hauling it, like, with a, uh, like a top kick or something like that, or, you, or like a one-ton? No, it's a semi truck with yeah. a fifty-three foot fan trailer. Oh, that'll do it. Yeah. 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 No, I'm like eighty thousand pounds rolling down the wow. road with all our spare parts. It's, <laughs> wow. It's a big, big ordeal. Yeah. So when you come to, I mean, this is like the first sand event you've ever been to, right? Like, I've never been to the sand. Yeah, with a four wheeler before. Let wow. Alone smart guy bring his monster truck <laughs> to try that out. Yeah. How, how'd you come in to um, bring it here? Like, how how did that process work? Was it something you had eyes on, or? Uh, no, my wife, uh, Becky McDonough, started a clothing line, and she came out to be a vendor. Oh, that's that's right. Yeah, yeah, and she was talking to the promoter, and then I was talking to him, and I thought, well, it could be fun, you know, to bring the truck just to park next to her and just, you know, promote her stuff. And then we thought, let's go try it in the sand and see what it's like. So so later today, you're going to be going out uh, and doing a little bit of an exposition on our short course track, you know. The, let the racers do their thing and then when they're done you're going to tear it up it'll be a good time what do you think what are you looking like where's your mindset on on the sand now that you've touched it just a little bit you know you, i mean you have very little experience but you've touched it a little bit what's your kind of mindset on going into something like that i'm looking forward to it honestly i mean everything about this has been fun it's been a good time learning lots uh just go out there and, and see how much sand it takes to make that thing go up really so when we were talking side by sides, right, we're talking about, you know, paddle tires or air pressure or, you know, things like that with with tires so big and massive. I mean, like how much does a tire weigh? Like 800 pounds with a wheel. With the wheel in it? Yeah. Each, each corner's got 800 pounds of rotating. Do those have going. to run uh, steels or are those aluminums? I run steel wheels, yeah. e locks, and then I chrome them because I like the way it looks. You know? <laughs> right. The heavier Who the doesn't? truck, the better. Yeah. <laughs> Now, those those wheels, if I remember right, have a few war wounds on them as well. So. Oh, yeah. No, that whole truck <laughs> is one big war wound. It's, it's been over a lot, and it's been crashed a bunch, but it still runs pretty good. So do you guys run bead locks on those, or do yep. you? Yep. Okay. They're and, 20, uh, 25 by 36-inch bead locks. Wow. That's like the size of my Can-Am DS that I'm driving around. <laughs> it could probably fit in your tubs. <laughs> But uh, probably weigh the same too. <laughs> it's probably pretty close. How much does that truck weigh? I think she's pushing fifteen thousand pounds now. Fifteen grand? Yeah. It Holy used, cow! I used to be thirteen eight, and then we built new axles for it before we came to this show, and I haven't weighed it since. But we added a lot of steel, a lot of weight to it. There's a lot of weight in the axles. Yeah, the unsprung weight on them is that's where it's all at. Well, Tuesday for not having been on sand before, that didn't look that way when you took that thing up that dune. That was. You yeah, got, it did. You got surprising. it going. It did well. I, w- I was happy with it. I noticed it's kind of loud, too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's well underneath the noise ordinance. Yeah, we're fine. Like, Don't like, worry about it. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> so you just run straight headers right off the block there, right? Zoomies. I don't even put a collector on them. There's just four yeah. pipes that come out of each oh, side. Wow. And what kind of what kind of fuel are you running? Methanol. Methanol? Yep. How, how hard is it to find that? Is you have to just ship it in and pallet No, there's a local fuel place that's a mile down the road for me, and I get it from there. Gotcha. But the methanol prices are ridiculous now. So yeah, I can imagine. They've over doubled. Easier to find, but harder to pay for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how do we convert a, uh, a Polaris two-cylinder into a methanol output motor? That's what I want to know. Yeah, that's above my pay grade. Dude. I can't <laughs> answer that question. <laughs> So, uh, what kind of block? What kind of engine setup is that? It's a 555-inch uh, Chevrolet-based Merlin block. Um, it's got Brodex heads on it. 871 supercharger with Enderly fuel injection. Now, is that something that you like? You built up, or is that someone you work with? Or uh, I have an engine builder in North Carolina. And he builds them, puts them in a crate, and sends them to me. NASCAR right. builder. Nope, monster wow. truck guy. Yeah, Merlin. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Merlin's pretty pretty popular in the marine industry. They build engines for. Uh, I think so. I think they build a lot stuff. of stuff. Yeah, and Brodix. I mean, t- if you're around drag racing, you know who Brodix is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a good program we got for a motor program. They're not the biggest horsepower, but they run all year long. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of nice to just be able to get in it and run it and not be switching out motors and yeah. putting bearings in it and all that how stuff. often do you have to rebuild it it really varies i don't run a full schedule anymore so you know if you just do a couple shows a year you're good it, i typically can get a full first quarter out of them before i got to freshen them up so gotcha. you can do 20 25 shows yeah i noticed you're about a full story up in the air in there do you need like an aerial work platform to get up into that thing or <laughs> yeah no it's a pain in the butt when it's got the tires on it to work on it you definitely let all the nitrogen out of the shocks and put the small tires on it makes it easy to work on 
That was something I didn't realize, you know, when we were talking the other day, was that you have to basically just deflate the entire truck, not just the wheels, like the shocks, everything to get it kind of squatting good. Yeah, and I'm one of the, I mean, everybody loads their stuff differently, but I wanted all my tools and parts low in the trailer rather than right. up in cabinets in the top. Right. So that's why the truck sits up so high, but you got to let all the air out of the shocks before you can load it, otherwise it's a convertible. So what kind of, what kind of shock side? But you're saying letting the air out of it? Are you? Well, I have the air. It's the nitrogen. Okay. They're a nitrogen shock, but yeah, you let all the nitrogen out of the accumulator, and then it won't hold itself up. It sits right down on the bump stops. Right. Yeah. It's amazing how many different topics you can cover in off road too, because I'm you know we're just we're just UTV people, and we'll go out and go rip and stuff like that. But like I'll go to Al's camp and I'll see this trailer set up. He's like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm I'm just weak sauce, man. I'm my little continental freaking thirty footer. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like a man here's in the top. Taj Mahal. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking forward to going and checking out his camp later. Yeah, for sure. So, Al, you speaking of shocks, you, you've gotten new shock set up this year and, and a new sponsor. You, you brought King on board. And, yep. and how's that changed what you do? How does that change your approach and the way you look at your car? Um, well, just like the, the whole reason that, that, you know, Medusa was rebuilt the way it was is just, uh, you know, we I, I'm always taking notes. I see things that, you know, need to be addressed and, and we address them. Right. Um, the crash at the end of the last year was a prime time to, you know, we had to do a bunch of a bunch of freshening up to it anyway. You know, uh, I'm not going to be driving around something that's all beat up. So it was a good time to, you know, get some of these new components on some good components on. And uh, the King 3.0s were uh, were in necessity i think um we're again we have very very low tuning on them right now but even just getting into the shocks um seeing the potential we have with playing with bleeds and all this other stuff that's inside of the inside of the shocks i'm super pumped on um they're going to work great i mean it's just a case of getting them set up uh, the the battle that we have is we're trying to get 3.0 shocks set up on a 1400 pound car right you know um it's it's a lot of uh there's nitrogen pressures involved there's uh, valving involved. There's you mean this is involved. not easy? Is that something anyone can do? <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a process to get it the way I want. But when I get it the way I want, I know that, you know, what, we're, what we've done is going to make it worthwhile. So what's the what what are some of the kind of differences that a, uh, an average consumer would understand? You know the differences between like the like a standard Fox shock versus like that the complicated King shocks. What are some of the differences there? Um, I, well, if, I mean, if you're talking OEM, you know, like a, a Fox shock is 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 electronic now, right? Or or an old bypass shock. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I guess all in all, like, to the, a sh long story short, there's a lot more bleeds that are uncontrollable in in your standard type of shocks um so you've only got so much uh so much compression dampening that you can even do that when you have that much bleed going through the going through the the or going past the piston i guess it's called um so the kings have a lot more adjustability on that aspect and um even just how the bodies are made um when you get into the pressures that go on with these shocks especially when you're just falling out of the sky uh there's a lot of expansion and and bodies do weird things and that's all with a race shock like king it's just so built badass right over a lot of that goes away you know yeah. so are um, you fully external bypass and all that um no these are still single shock per wheel so these are just these are actually a basic shock that i'm using because you hear uh, that folks he's basic yeah he's just basic. basic guy man <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is a basic shock just simply for the compression factor honestly because you get we start getting too fancy with bypasses and bleeds all of a sudden you're losing too much oil as it's as that piston's coming down Right. And so, you know, we, we talk about hucking these things in the air, whether it be a UTV or a, or a, or a monster truck or, or whatever. Um, we've talked a little bit in the past about, you know, ramp design and, and how that comes into play. With a UTV, it's very, you know, specific of not getting that rear end to buck, right? Yeah. Um, with a monster truck, like, what are you looking for when it comes to, a, like, a jump or a popper? Like, are you just looking for something that's the same size as your tire just to get you in the air? Or what, what kind of design elements are you looking for? There's so many variables, truthfully. It depends on how high it is how long it is it's real similar to like the the side-by-side -side type jumps how much ground speed you're going to have when you hit the jump and <clears throat> 
I'm really not familiar with the sand, so I don't know what it's even going to be like going off a sand jump, honestly. Right. I don't know if I'm going to hit the jump one time and it's come back. It'll be a foot lower because those tires are just It's going to be a plume all the of sand. sand out. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going to go straight through it. Yeah, I'm not sure. The typical monster truck jump is, like you said, probably about as tall as the tires, six, eight feet long, and lots of pop in them. You know, a regular monster truck show, we don't get a 200-yard run to go hit a sand jump. Right. Everything's done in, like, an arena. Or I was going to say, like, in the lane. arena shows that I take my boys to, right? Like, everything is within 50 feet, 100 feet of the jump. Yeah, like, we'll actually do a show, like, on a basketball court or a hockey arena. What? Oh, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> no, it's it's tight, and everything's just, they call it pop and drop. You know, it's just real steep, and you go straight up and then come right back wow. down, real low ground speed. Wow. And I'm assuming you're changing gearing and stuff for all oh, those for different sure. things. Yep, change the gear, change the shocks, change the tire pressure. It all depends on where you're at. So you said you were running a specific gear and thinking about maybe changing it. You know, what are you running right now? Right now, the truck, uh, what we change is the, the transfer case has twic- quick change gears in it. Mm-hmm. And I can adjust it with just two gears pulling out real easy. And right now, it's 20% underdriven. Gotcha. So, And with that much horsepower, that equates to a lot of torque. Yeah, and I just put those gears in it because, I, like I said, never been in the sand. So I was worried about melting down the transmission. Right. So we wanted to start off as easy as we could on the drivetrain and then kind of creep up on it from there. So how fast can you change gears on that thing? Ten minutes. Really? How do we build that into a side-by-side? Yeah, I was just thinking <laughs> that. Man, that's, that's badass. Yeah. yeah, it makes it super easy. That's faster than a belt change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been talking with, um, with HCR about that on, on our Pro because it weighs like 23, 2,400 pounds, and uh, belts don't like that. Yeah, yeah, but you're getting clutch work done on that, right? It's, it's had clutch work done. Oh, you got a new clutch. It needs to get re-geared. Yeah. What is the gear change on a side by side? You tranny. change like the okay. Yeah, yeah. You gotta go go into the tranny and change the gears. I've actually um, I'm I'm putting thirty fives on a bunch of pros coming up here, and I think that that that'll be a I think it's a thirty percent gear reduction. Right. Um, that'll probably be what you're looking for. Right. Right. Because the pros, their top speeds crazy fast. Like to uh, what is it is it i think it's 90 or something 95 isn't it yeah they go they go so yeah, with 30 yeah. percent gear reduction and some bigger tires you know you're gonna be yeah. you're gonna be right around the eight there, mile there's mile no way mile. there's no way mine would do 90 now but it um on its stock 30s it, it get close yeah yeah sure. but that's what i mean we, we reduce it a bit and we'll get yeah we'll get you back up yeah, there yeah. you got you got to keep up on the trail <laughs> man for real <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm usually leading it so they want me <laughs> get out of the way <laughs> So, uh, you know, when it comes to, to off-road and, and doing some of the stunting that we're doing, like what kind of, what kind of things are, are, you're both very experienced into your craft now, right? Like you've been doing it for how many years? Mm, I don't even know. A long time, since 2010. Wow, okay. So 11 then, years, I guess. Sorry. And Al, you've been jumping big as far as big jumps go for, what, five years? No, literally since probably 2011. I think we started hucking ramps 2010, 2011. So there was something in the water around the 2010, 2011. <laughs> yeah, Polaris <laughs> Razor came out. <laughs> 2008. Um, and we've talked to you about it in the past. You were you were you were bike jumping back in the day too. Yeah, yeah. No, we we've uh, we've been doing the freestyle thing since like ninety. Jesus, I mean, big jumps since like ninety four. I'd say you know and. Uh, yeah, as soon as that razor came out, ninety four, I think so, or, or, or earlier. That is well before the big freestyle motocross thing hit and stuff like that. That's killer. Freestyle, like 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 you know, crusty demons of dirt came out in ninety six. Right, that was like the big boom. Like shit. it was kind of it, things went viral about ninety nine to oh one. If that, you know, if I remember right, you had the freestyle movement kind of really ascending, but then you had, then you had three of the most pinnacle freaking racers ever you had carmichael you had uh mcgrath stewart was coming up and um uh james stewart or i'm sorry uh, pastrana was coming up too yeah. and brought a lot of attention to the sport so you, you get you were right on the precipice of that you were oh, yeah. full engaged we by watched then. it we watched it grow man we yeah. we had the we had the homemade foam pits to try to compete we had the whole <laughs> nine man it was uh yeah it wasn't pretty, but we made it work. <laughs> yeah. So coming with that much history behind both of your belts, um, you know, when you go to approach something, what makes it like exciting now? Is it what makes it different than? I mean, I'm assuming with like you, you come to the sand, that's a whole different world. It's something new and exciting. Yeah, and right out of the gate since I got here, I've been checking everybody's stuff out and just learning as much as I can. 
Right. Because yeah. you've got a little razor, but you've never been out on the sand. So. No, yeah, I have a razor, but it's never left the property. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a big trip for us on that, too. Going out in the sand this week has been a lot of fun. It's been Did, neat. Were you, are you able to get out on a car? <laughs> On a side by side, yeah, I, I brought one. We took mine. Oh, out. killer! Right on. I was gonna say, if you hadn't, you know, those Packard boys over there, that's who should take you for sure. <laughs> yeah, Five hundred horsepower and a little man. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> and a squirrely YXZ. It's ridiculous. Have yeah. you been on a night ride yet? Mm. Oh, oh man, buddy, you gotta get on that. Okay. You gotta get on that tonight. Yeah. I went on my first one this trip last night, and like you went last night. Oh, uh, it was that wild, was a big group. Man. It was wild. There had to have been. I, I'm assuming we got really close to the thousand car mark. Last oh night. yeah, that was. It was chaos. Like it was great. It was just like a little <laughs> kind of a mini, mini race, so to say. Mini was, rally race. Yeah, mini rally race. It was Every cool. five minutes, you were rally racing somebody different. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It was super cool. Yeah, I found out early uh, on because we went out night before last, and uh, as we were battling our way to the front, we got up where we could see the front guys, and there was a section there that opened wide open, and I, you know, my suspension's tuned, my car's tuned, and I'm like, I'm going to unload here, and I'm going to overtake like ten cars. And I smashed that thing. I did not reel in one, and I'm to the floor. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, oh, I guess everybody's fast now. <laughs> well, the, the, that's like the pro last night. Me and Josh wrote in the pro last night, and, and it was the same thing. There was spots that we were overtaking, and you just we were because it, it was most mostly whoop, whoop sections, and everyone has trouble with whoop sections, and that thing's got so much power. And we just hit the X button for the suspension, and it just yeah. we're passing like 20, yeah. 30 the cars. The faster you at the go, time. the better it drives, buddy. <laughs> go on a night ride at Oakland. Oklahoma and, and yeah just have somebody with you to count how many people you pass like, oh yeah. yeah I was like around 90 <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm gonna run a GoPro to, uh, I got a 360 cam and I'm gonna run that tonight because it was just it was too epic not to for sure not to see man it, it was just, pretty cool and the fog had rolled in so you were starting to see like it was just like a big alien invasion out there of just all yeah. these lights and things going on and well, well the fog adds a bit too because you can't like you got to keep visor prep going because uh-huh. you can't see because you got mi- this mist forming you're, on you're, everything and yep. the pumpers are pumping now uh moist air into the into the helmets too so it's fogging up on the inside and you're going on visor duty trying to get not sand in the face but you're trying, it's kind of like racing ball honestly <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. If you haven't done that, that's even if you're not rallying the thing, like oh, just, just getting to see, just, just to getting see that many cars. I, I don't know if you can't not rally. Like everybody's well, you there have to, to, to stay safe. Like yeah, everybody's there. Otherwise, to you're the one causing problems. So <laughs> um, the first night, there was a couple guys that had done that and they caused a bunch of problems and they came back with parts and, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, and we had we had people on the way back that were parked in the trail. I mean, there was like a couple sections where it was like I-5 out there, Yeah, you know, just bumper to bumper and, you and know. Then one person will get stuck and it's just like no mercy just everyone just like Rah! both sides just like, 100%. He's, he's waiting till the end to get up yeah. if you stop in the middle of a hill climb you're gonna get buried oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah i encourage if you if even if you don't want to partake just go out to one of the dunes in the middle and just watch it's it's pretty impressive and last night they had uh that main when they got to the north end and started making their way back they made that big bowl cut and then they, the group pretty much split, and it became like this two-finger thing that then reconjoined itself at the middle, and it was pretty awesome to watch. It's yeah. pretty awesome. Now, I don't think I've ever seen that that kind of rallying at any other event. I don't. I don't think any anybody else does that. The Glamis gets busy, but it's not a rally. It's just a bunch of people. Well, well Glamis. Uh, I've you know I'm out here talking. I went out with the Dune and Destroy guys, and I was I was guiding them through some of those trails and stuff after the night ride, and we pull over, and they're just come up. Uh, um, uh, Kyle came up to me. He's like, dude, we got to get you out to Glamis. And uh, I was going, you guys go 600, 800 deep in Glamis? No, 30. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm there, but big difference. <laughs> well, and I mean, these night rides have changed so much. Like, it's, this is getting exciting now. You know, like before, like when the night rides started, um, I mean, I've been hump at these events and they started almost. And, and the night rides were literally like, you know, it was a, a casual kind of a putt around a and, jaunt through the and jaunt through the forest right <laughs> now it's like it's like game on you know and it's yeah. actually pretty exciting because i mean being i mean being a racer I, I like having traffic around me like that's mm-hmm. that's that's fun you know yeah. so it's yeah, it's and cool. being aware of who's next to you where they went all of a sudden they disappeared okay where'd they go yeah. okay, oh now they're on the <laughs> other side like it, it's it's a whole different ball game when you can mix in that much adrenaline and, and excitement and you're right you, you got to be aware you got to watch what's around you like some people are probably driving a little above their limits just if as long as you're intelligent about keeping your distance and you know not 
foreseeing hopefully what you think is someone else is going to do you know that's a big right. a big factor you, you know what's fun, what's funny about that is like yeah definitely know your limits definitely keep visibility but as i'm as i'm running that thing i'll see some cars up ahead of me make some really aggressive moves first thing I'm, and when they pull it off every time i'm like yeah that was a ballsy pass that was sick <laughs> <laughs> it's like totally dangerous but i'm like that was badass and then the next thought is i'm doing that oh without a doubt <laughs> he did it i yeah. can do it there's there's only one thing i won't do on a night ride and that's bump somebody and that's has nothing to do with uh you know etiquette or anything like that and it has to do with my wallet <laughs> <laughs> so when uh i think the other day we were talking speaking of wallet we were talking the other day just like how much gas you go through to, to oh even drive gosh. that thing like yeah, it's what's ridiculous um what what does that scenario look like how what's your what's your mile per gallon are you epa rated yeah yeah i'm close it's a hybrid <laughs> for sure no and i have no idea what it's going to be like in the sand how much fuel it's going to use but like on a typical freestyle you know where you go out for 90 seconds on an inside of of a dirt track i'll do like 18 to 20 gallons holy crap <laughs> so he's gonna double that on the sand he's gonna double uh, that yeah, yeah oh, so geez. and i only got a 22 gallon fuel cell on that thing so i'm thinking we're packing fuel jugs in the razor yeah just get just out to, to get where back. we're gonna go and then fuel it yeah then go hit some jumps and then fuel it to come back yeah hey, do you have a demo time set up is it um is, is it after Huckfest? Is it before? Or? You know, the guy I've been getting my direction from is sitting right across from me. So <laughs> hey, hey, Zach. What wrong, dude. <laughs> so he's going to be at the rally. We're going to park him out on the rally course so that he's ready to go when the rally racing's done. Um, or I should say the short course, not the rally course. Um, and when that is officially over and they've declared winners and all that stuff, then uh, we'll rope everything off and make sure no one's out on the course and, and let him do his thing. So uh, should be a good time. Everybody that's, you know, surrounding will get a good show and, and a good time and the kids will love it. And, you know, that's one thing that the show is all about is, is family friendly and, yeah. and something for everybody. And, and I think, you know, the opportunity to have um, the truck out here this year is going to just solidify that idea that we have a little bit for everybody and, and the whole family can come and have a great time. I still can't get over you ripping that thing in a basketball stadium or a hockey rink. Like when you had it out there on Tuesday ripping that thing it's it's freaking uh, funny car loud and in a hockey rink it's probably have you ever been to a monster brutal. truck show never, <laughs> never. I, I don't live in a big city <laughs> yeah okay well I live in a town of 1300 so yeah I know oh, there you go. yeah we're uh, but uh, my when closest you do, neighbor is a quarter mile away <laughs> when you do like the small stuff like that there are you know noise regulations and stuff like that so sometimes you got to put mufflers on them and then they also have air quality meters oh got it so because you can obviously fumigate a small basketball stadium real quick real quick especially is, when you're putting that much fuel through the exhaust <laughs> what's funny though is us hillbillies love that fuel. smell <laughs> <laughs> fuel. no exactly some of my happiest times are when you 100%. load in the trailer and the thing's just blubbering fuel out and your eyes are burning and yeah it's a good feeling it is it's like it's like a two-stroke dirt bike <laughs> yeah every time i see a banshee ride by you can get a whiff of that yes thing sir instantly. <laughs> Uh, you know, you guys have been in this for a while. You know, when it, when you get out, you try something new. Um, Al, you know, a jump's a jump. You're just talking about distances and angles, and now it's all the math and science that goes into it. Um, what What's getting you excited to go out and ride? Is it just maybe, you know, getting out into the woods? Is it is it jumping? Is it um, a different car? Is it, what, what are you, what's giving you excited these days? For me, um, this is... Like, uh, I think I differ from some people is, is that this is really a, a goal for me to see what I can build these cars to do um, more than even just the jumping. Like the jumping's cool. I like it. I enjoy it. Um, but it's a, uh, it's the science behind like hey what can we do to the shocks what can we do to the suspension like i i love designing stuff i love designing new uh prototypes and you know and, and to see where we can build where we can get with what we're designing now you know that's that's my biggest assignment when we when we like i'm getting a shock dyno i think i mentioned before you know like now we can start running stuff on the dyno before we have to put it in the car it's going to save me a lot of time you know yeah. uh, we can start dynoing these things properly and and see if we can figure out the the per perfect uh the perfect ratio let's say of comfort versus you know not coming down hard um that's that that's what keeps me going honestly is the, is the design um uh but, but the jumps are obviously awesome um every, especially when you go out to the sand there's always just so many variables out here uh but i mean hell i mean even at home you know we hit 
like a big ramp set up in my yard you know and like every now and then it, it, you see still it's, it's exciting you know it feels good to that there's that weightless feeling you're in the air for three seconds you you land smooth it's like yeah like right on you know that was fun like, it's the payoff that, that gets it <laughs> i i never really thought of that because i i can totally relate to that since we've been here we've tune the suspension on both the pro and the x3 and you're trying to find those differences you know i'll take people out and i'll go hit some g outs that was bottoming out the car on day one and i'm trying to and i'll hit the same thing and it's not bottoming out it's like okay let's go find the one that will mm. and uh, then you find one with the will and you limp around for a while afterwards after you get out of the car <laughs> but, but nonetheless i totally can relate to that like i i want i want my car you know and my wallet permits that i want my car to be a juggernaut yeah. and the only way you find out if those changes are working is to find some stuff that's going to push it well and as, as i think i said before too like um for me like grounding out isn't a isn't an, an option you know like like if i ground out on a jump like i'm pissed and and it's like okay well if we ground it that like <laughs> if we ground it out like you know we got to go back to the drawing board yeah. and see how we can stop this thing from grounding out like you know that uh oklahoma was a prime example uh you know that was a huge jump um we didn't even go through all the bump you know like that was perfect um life was explain good. to those that aren't familiar with last year's jump what was that setup at Oklahoma, yeah, um, it was a that was only a 95 foot gap, I think, but it had a great table, and then uh, we landed 215 at the bottom of the downhill, and you know it was a we were coming down from what would have been like if you wanted to come if you wanted to talk about where we were coming down from the at the height of the ramp, you would have coming down 35 feet in the air, right? You know, like it was it was a big jump and um and you know the shocks worked on that you know right so i was so impressed watching the video of that of your car not i mean your tail drug and and roosted a bit but that's just nature of the physics of the car but the the fact that you didn't just slap hard right like it's just a testament to to that design and that engineering into the shocking and and well and that was the only reason we didn't crash too right like if 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 that car had grounded out it wouldn't have been able to it would have unloaded too fast and even though i did land a little bit sideways because again and sand is just very, very hard to control. Um, it would have gone for a tumble, right? But right. not grounding out leaves your shocks still working, and then we were able to power out of it, and life was good, you know? So I've seen pictures of your truck, vertical, roughly 20-some feet in the air. Like, what's what's that like, facing the ceiling and coming back down <laughs> in a monster truck that weighs 15,000 pounds? Uh, like, all three of you kicked me in the back at the same time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, if you can land on a car or a van or a bus, that helps tremendously. Yeah. That, that is your suspension. When you land like this, your truck don't have no suspension. It's straight on the bumper. So if frame. you go straight up and go down to dirt, it, it smarts really quick. I can imagine. So what's your favorite style of, of what, do you, what do you even call it? Just driving or trucking or monster trucking? Um, <laughs> When we first started out, I always wanted to be the fastest racer. That was kind of our goal. And then we started winning races, and that was fun, but everybody always evolves. So right. you, you're never the fastest racer forever. You get your you know little window, and then someone whoops your ass the next show. Right. The, the jumping thing used to be, when we were doing it pretty serious full-time, I used to really try to be the guy that sent it out there the farthest. I kind of enjoyed that. And like he said, you're always trying to make your suspension better, always looking for that sweet spot. And I like doing that, too. I always tinker with my shocks every show. Because we talked before, you, this is legitimately just a passion project. Like, you're not out here making, you know, millions of dollars traveling the country, right? No, I mean. no. I, I, yeah, I rarely make any money with that thing. It's a total hobby. It's just for fun. It's just uh, every little kid, you know, always wants to go out in a monster truck and jump it. And I'm lucky enough that I get to do that in my spare time. So transitioning from the monster truck down to a little razor, like, what's that? What's my razor that? has a hard life. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> I, I'm on, this is my second one, and yeah, we are not easy on them. They, they never leave our property, and they get canned real fast. How, what, how long did you have your razor before it was on its side the first time? The first night. The first night? Yeah. I think that's the story of the majority of the yeah, razor exactly. owners. <laughs> yeah, I had a, a regular 1000 that I bought, and we had totaled it and had to re it, re it, A-arms, all that, and I sold it. And then I went and bought this turbo, and my wife now was like, why did you buy that? You're, you know, those don't last. And I'm like, oh, babe, this one's great. Get in it. We go to jump the parking lot, and boom, I broke it right there in front of her <laughs> five minutes after we unloaded it, you know, bragging how cool the new ones were, so... 
they, they definitely get put through the paces around our property. Well, like I say, those are just excuses to buy the upgrade. So yeah, well, you know, I've been having a lot of fun doing that here. There's so many vendors <laughs> here. The guy can spend all his money real quick. I, I'm super curious how those builds come together. Like on your truck, where, where did you start? Where, it was a blueprint, and you just started started fabbing in the in the shop, or like how, how does that come together? Because that there's a lot going on on that pick on that truck. Yeah. Um, I guess like when it, when I started, it was just you know uh, every high schooler has that four-wheel drive pickup that breaks parts, and then you put bigger axles in it, and then you could put more suspension and bigger tires, and it just evolved. My first one was very basic, very homemade, you know, a lot of crappy-looking welds on it, and not a real good motor, and then we just evolved from there. But like now, I've done it enough. This would be my fourth truck that we've built and now it's just kind of second nature you know what works and what doesn't same thing i'm sure as al you know when you're putting one together and it gets a lot easier each time this one we built in i think 18 days and then didn't even test it back the trailer up to the shop drove in the trailer and headed for texas wow so if you were to talk to your like 20 year old self when he was out in the garage working on that crappy weldy welder and the truck <laughs> what would be the one takeaway that you would like say hey don't do that or fix that before you get too far into this uh, you know i don't know or would I, it just be stop now <laughs> yeah I, I really don't know there, there's some days you'd ask me that question and i'd say that yeah don't even think about it you know but then there's some weekends you have an excellent weekend and you're like this is what it's all about you load it back in the trailer you had a blast meet a bunch of cool people have fun so it's worth it it really is it's just a lot of work what do you think, Al? What would you tell your 20-year-old self about getting into all this? Or, or what would be the, maybe some of the lessons learned that you would have told yourself? Hmm. That's <laughs> Don't do deep, it. That's a deep question. <laughs> um, bigger mustache? Yeah, bigger mustache <laughs> right off the bat for sure. Um, <laughs> what happened to my hair? I would yeah. say, I'd say... Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I haven't, I don't got a lot of regrets really, like how we've kind of evolved. Like, I mean, there's, there is scenarios, which, you know, if you had to do over, you'd probably do over, but I wouldn't, I don't, I don't have anything that I would have been like, do this different, you know, like, uh, we've, we've, I think we've played it. We've played the game as safe as we could, you know, like there's always going to be, there's going to be scenarios, you know, you can't hindsight's always 2020 and you can't dwell on that shit whether it's this or just life in general you know so i really don't have a, a regret of anything that we've we've done and i think we've done it kind of in a process that worked you know we've got the we've got the uh fuck we've got the records to prove it you know like it's uh yeah i, I got I, I, don't, I don't know how much i would have done different you know really well, what was what was 20 year old al on like a 252 stroke 450 something like that or yeah um, meister bag but yeah well, i was just gonna say i don't know if i can say what i was on 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 tape um <laughs> no it was a two, uh, uh, crf or no cr 250 right because it's two strokes back then yeah and then it started off i think i got a kx 250 first and a cr 250 and then uh we got onto a kx 450 and i still got a kx 450 a CRF 450, a uh, bunch of 50s. We, I did a whole 50, uh, 50 CC stunt section in my life as well. We were back flipping 50s and hitting like 60 foot ramps on 50 CC bikes, and it was <laughs> it was a wild, wild, so this, wild era, man. <laughs> is, is this around like maybe 02 to 05? Yep. Yeah, yeah, man. I remember that whole pit bike thing. That that was a big deal. Yeah, it was. It's um, kind of getting a resurgence over the last couple of years, and too. it's on three wheelers now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we really weeding people out now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, okay. So here's a question: Would you have rather given yourself all the engineering knowledge and experience that you have now, or would you rather have given yourself the lotto numbers so that you could go faster? What do you mean? <laughs> so if you were to if you were to impart something to yourself, would it be all the knowledge you've gained over these years, or would it be the lot of numbers so that you could be enabled to do more younger and progress faster? Mm, knowledge, knowledge is is key. I think you know, just just being a little bit. I guess you could say I just being a little bit smarter about what you're hitting, you know, like uh, there's there's now you just know, hey, that's not going to work, you know, simple, simple as that. Like in today we, we had a we had a or, or yesterday, like, you know, the original jump that we had set up for this event, like it's just it would not have worked, you know. Um, so we had to make changes like that back in the day. We we're like, oh, we'll try it. You know, we'll try it. And, See what happens. And, 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 and <laughs> would I have gotten hurt? No, you know, we, we would have been probably safe and everything, but it would have been a wrecked car. It would have been, you know, just some some more injuries that would haunt me later you know or something like that but um 
yeah, yeah, the, the knowledge is key. And I definitely see myself as we evolve looking at jumps and being like, it's just not worth the, it's not worth the compression. It's just not a cool enough jump. I'm not even doing it, you know, like even though it's just, it might even be some shitty little jump, but it's just not worth the compression. For the record, Zach, I'll take the lotto numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember the lottos were a lot smaller back then. <laughs> so anyways, it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good time. It's already been a good show. Um, you know, as far as your guys' booth, uh, you've got probably a ton of foot traffic through there being at the For main sure. entrance there uh, to the dunes. And I'm sure lots of kids and families coming up to the truck. And yeah, and a lot, of, a lot of smiles. It's, it's cool to see the kids come up and like it. It's fun. So uh, anyways, right after uh, short course, we'll see you out on the sand and uh, we're going to go uh, scope things out and get things dialed in for you. And then uh, it'll be a good time. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to see it, guys. Stay safe out Looking there. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Rock and roll. Yeah. Thank you, guys, as usual. 100%. Till the next thing, guys. Peace. Peace.